Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Okay, so we're back. Uh, this is also Grunge Tuesday, which is why I'm wearing the, the plaid shirt from the 90s. And this is the day, as I said, it, they celebrate in, in the Christian religion. Uh, it's the day that uh, Jesus said to his disciples, uh, I am here, entertain me. That's where that comes from. So, at any rate, if you don't get that joke, what can I tell you? So, uh, this is a different kind of cleaning machine that I wanted to show you. This is the Lori Craft, and this is the PR4, which has been superseded by the PR6. I've had this for a number of years. So, this is the string type machine, which uh, was developed originally by Keith Monks. Uh, it was a very, very expensive machine originally, and it was originally used by the Library of Congress and you know professional organizations that could afford it. So, this is less expensive. The Lori Craft, but it's, it's a very finely made machine. <clears throat> and the way it works is it's vacuum operated, but it does not have velvet lips. Instead, it has this thread over here. And so every time you clean a record, <clears throat> you pull out, you rotate this and loosen it up so that the, th the thread that touches the record gets sucked into the machine and a new piece of thread is showing. So the point of this is that what's touching the record surface is a clean piece of thread every time you clean a record as opposed to velvet lips that attract a lot of dirt and crap that, gets, that you have to be sure to keep clean. So I'll show you how this works. And the reason why this machine is good is because it'll clean any size record. The reason why it has an issue is that it's got a full-size platter. So as I said before, if you're gonna clean records on a full-size platter, have two mats. Have one mat that can be the, the dirty, the mat that it comes with that can be the dirty side. So you put your dirty side two on the mat and clean side one and then take it off and put a mat on there so that the clean side touches a clean surface only. Okay, but for the, our purposes, I'm not going to do that. This machine is also good because you can clean all size records with it easily. You don't have to worry about having different size lips for different size records. So uh, I brought some records. This is always a good excuse to show you some cool records. So this is from the 1950s. These are 10-inch records from the 1950s. These are cheesecake records. Cheesecake meaning that they used pictures of what was considered at that point in time sexy women to get uh, horny audiophiles to buy the record regardless of what the music was like. So that's one. There is I Love with the alto sex. Alto sex of Jay White, I love. And there's Ray Martin and his orchestra with, uh, this is someone else, She's she loves too. She's got her uh, tiger skin behind her. And there's another one. This is Take Me to Far Away Places. I mean, that's just, you know, that's pretty sexy. And then I love with uh, the Nori Paramore Orchestra. Okay, this is the whole set of them. I got these at some perverted garage sale. And then the, th this is the sexiest of all. It's the Capital Hi-Fi demonstration record. And this exudes sexuality. Okay, so let's just clean one and I'll show you how it works. That's my excuse to show you some cheesy stuff. Okay, this jacket is messed up. In fact, this record's chipped, so I'm not going to use that one. I think what happened here is a... A lusty audiophile in 1955 actually bit this record. You can see this actually teeth marks on it. Poor guy. Okay, now let's pull another one out. Okay, I'm touching the record with my with my fingertips. I'm sorry, but for the, our purposes, that's fine. This is on S6 Records, SX, which the emphasis is on the sex, not on the S. We put it on here. This turns forward and back. It turns very quickly, so you've got to be careful about how much fluid you put on here. Now, I brought out a few other types of cleaning pads. This is the one that was developed by the record, the Disc Doctor, and uh, it was uh, kind of copied by other people. No names mentioned. I'm doing this. You shouldn't do this. Don't ever do that. Use something else to clean it, but I haven't used this in a long time. So, And if you're going to have different kinds of fluids, you should write on the brush that you're using, which particular fluid you've used with, with which particular brush, so you don't cross-pollinate your brushes. So this was the uh, Audio Intelligent Enzymatic Formula, which I'm going to show you. This is an, Enzymatic formulas are, are very popular with certain people, and enzymatic formulas 
have uh, an enzyme in it to break down um, organics like mold. Not mold release compound. This, I think I said this the last time, but there's no such thing as mold release compound that's on the surface of the record of a new record when you buy it. You'll read that sometimes. You'll say, use this particular fluid to clear the mold release compound from the surface of the record. So I spoke to the gentleman that works with the plastic company in Thailand that makes most of the PVC. And I said to him, what about mold release compound to clean, to get a clean off your record? He said, there should be no mold release compound on any record. Mold release compounds are some of the materials that are used in the uh, actual formulation of the PVC itself. In other words, PVC that's used for making records is not pure PVC. It's got certain additives to it to make the, the melting better, to make the, the, the vinyl more supple so it doesn't get brittle and break, etc., etc., etc. That's where the mold release compound is. It doesn't come out of the surface when you press a record. So that's just one of these old wives' tales. So if you have an old wife, tell her to shut up about mold release compound, okay? Um, that was a Steve Allen type joke. Now, this is AI's, uh, this is uh, Audio Intelligent Vinyls. I like, I like this, uh, these products also. So let's use this to enzymatically clean this old record. So I'm going to shake it up a little bit. And they tell you right on here, uh, avoid flooding the record with cleaning fluid because this thing's spinning really quickly and centrifugal force will send this fluid flying all over the place. So I'm going to try to be careful with it and not flood the record. With too much fluid. Okay. Fluid's on here. And now I'm going to clean it. So you can also put this in reverse if you want to back, back up your machine and uh, get the fluid in there the opposite way. And then you take this arm and you move it over here, not over there, and you put the pump on, put the arm on. It's, it's fairly quiet. The reason why you need that thread is if there was no thread, then the, uh, the arm, the, the piece that, the part that contacts the record would just suck down on the record and nothing would come up. So the thread provides a microscopic gap between the piece of plastic that's at the end of this arm and the record surface and that microscopic gap allows the fluid to get sucked up on Essex records okay so now you can see it's doing its thing it takes longer than cleaning a record with the vacuum type machine because it's going it has to traverse across the surface of the record but it also has the advantage of being much quieter and also again like I said you present a clean surface of thread to the record with each record that you clean, unlike the other kind of machines, which you have to clean, keep those lips clean because they're, they're just collecting all the schmutz as they, as they go across the surface of the record. So now it's done the whole thing, and, and eventually it will make its way back to there and stop. And you're done. And as you can see, the record is perfectly dry and clean. And that is the Lori Craft type machine, the thread type machine, which uh, Keith Monk's son continues to manufacture. So I'm not trying to be uh, one, one brand centric here, but I'm showing you the Lori Craft, which I use. And I'll also clean for you a, a, a seven inch record. So I brought a seven inch record here. I brought an interesting record I got at a garage sale by Mr. Norman Petty. You know, Norman Petty uh, produced Buddy Holly and produced Buddy Holly brilliantly. But Norman Petty also had a career as, as a musician. And uh, I had here my 45 RPM adapter and I put it someplace and I don't know where I put it. I don't, I don't see it. I don't see my 45, it's back there. I don't see it behind here. I don't see it, I don't see it. I have lost my 45. <laughs> I brought it out here. It's a very expensive one too, but I can't find it. So anyway, it's the same thing. You put this on here. You have to have a, an adapter, obviously. And then, is it there? It's right there. <laughs> 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 it was right there, but it was in front of me. I couldn't see it. Okay. So let's see. This is really nice and machined by, who are the guys? That, this guy in Brooklyn that makes these. What's his name? 
I don't know his name, but I'm sort of feeling like I should be Zachary now for some reason. Okay, my dear. Okay, um, so this is the Norman Petty Trio, Buddy Holly's producer with Mood Indigo. We're not going to play it, we're just going to clean it. And uh, this is Osage. This is, these are the guys that, that distribute Audio Intelligent, and they have a little brush to clean 45s. So you, can, you should have, if you have a lot of different kinds of records, different sizes, you should have a brush for each size, and you should have a separate brush for each fluid that you use. So if you're using an enzymatic fluid, be sure to have a separate brush for it. And also, if you're using an enzymatic fluid, I should have gone back and cleaned that record again with a purified water, plain purified water. You shouldn't just clean with enzymatic fluid and leave it. It's a two-step process. Okay. I know that as I finished that record and took it off the platter, some nerd out there was saying, he didn't clean it a second time with distilled water. <laughs> what does he know? He knows nothing. My favorite, my favorite post under one of my videos was from a guy who said, clearly from that video, you're a vinyl wannabe. You, you, you're new into this. You've never been into records before. I can tell by how you handle the records. How lame. It was so great. <laughs> it was so funny. Okay, so now you, you, you just um, pull a little bit of, loosen the thread, the thread here so there's, it's loose right here, see? And then when it starts, it will, it will tighten up like Archie Bell on the drills. And yeah, you shouldn't put it on the record label. You should start it on, on the vinyl, I know. But this is, it, we're doing a video here for you, you know, so. But I like this kind of machine, especially on seven and 10 inch records. It's very, very useful. And it's very quiet. And I use this all the time on a lot of records. As much as I still use the ultrasonic machine most of the time. Because with that, you don't have to sit here and watch it go. And there you have it. And the fluid and the string, the old string, collects in a jar over there. And if you uh, leave that jar for a long time with the fluid and the string, uh, amazing things grow out of there. I mean, they come out and they can actually tickle you under your throat. All right, so that's the Lori Craft machine. So that, that gives you uh, an indication of how to use one of these machines. And now what I really should do is go back and clean this record with distilled water or deionized water or magic water, whatever, or magic Johnson or whatever, and then it's clean. Okay, that's that. Thank you for watching.